right, salam alaikum everybody. My name is Abdurrahman Al-Gabwendi and I'll be talking about an introduction into browser fuzzing. So um, it's gonna, gonna be a little bit difficult for me to fully give a full introduction. So hopefully I'll make it uh, uh, given the short time here. Um, and I, I, I hope I will be able to cover at least the main component in my opinion which is, uh, we'll talk about that later, but which is just generating uh, the random input. Um, but before that, uh, I want to first introduce myself. Uh, I already said my name, but uh, more a little bit more about me would be that I am a bug bounty hunter. I've been hunting for bugs ever since I can remember. Uh, but uh, for bounties specifically, uh, I can say that uh, started from late 2014 and uh, by the end of 2015, I fully got into browser fuzzing and uh, mostly design issues, uh, vulnerability research and, and, and fuzzing actually came a little bit later, but I, I will discuss this a little further down the presentation, I found out that I was fuzzing all along anyway, um, but in, in just the strict, um, or I should say loose definition of the word uh, fuzzing. So um, another thing about me is I'm part of the browser vulnerability research team in Microsoft uh, as of like under a year ago. And um, this, place once I you know started working there I really found that my, my uh, one big gap in my knowledge was uh, fuzzing in general I, I sort of had uh, an opinion about fuzzing that turned out not to be true like that it's somehow you know just abusive of the CPU and you know there's no no benefit to it really other than monetary but that's that turns out not to be true at all and as I'll explain that later um, and yeah, another thing is I love computers. Uh, been using them since, again, I can remember. And uh, just uh, full on nerd, uh, techie, whatever you want to call it. Just anything has to do with the um, technology. I love it. So you can imagine uh, me listening to everybody presenting here today and actually finding out about this. I mean, I found this, um, you know, bar camps thing last year. And, and so, uh, I wish I knew about it before then, um, because this is like, you know, the best thing ever. Uh, but anyway, let's get into fuzzing. So uh, the point of fuzzing in a, in a, from a security perspective, you want to find uh, bugs that are security concerns, not just, you know, uh, reliability concerns. And so when you find a bug or you want to find a bug, uh, a lot of people like to call it, it's like solving a puzzle. Uh, and I, I like to, you know, show you like a Rubik's cube. This is how somebody might solve a Rubik's cube, just chilling and, and, and thinking about it and just, you know, relaxing. And what fuzzing does is turns this into something like this, right? So <laughs> instead of enjoying yourself and all of this stuff, uh, there's still some enjoyment, uh, but once it's done, uh, then you can like uh, just watch and, and see it uh, uh, do its thing. So um, regarding fuzzing, the main component I would say, or the first step is to generate pseudo random input. And by that is essentially just um, generating some sort of an input that uh, the target program in this instance would be the browser would uh, take in and then interpret in various ways. And we'll talk about that more later on. After that, uh, you will have to check if anything interesting happened. And if it does, then you save the test case that generated or the input that generated this interesting, whatever metric you wanna go by. And then you simply repeat the process over and over again. And of course, this is a very oversimplification. There's a lot of things going on in each step. But I want to kind of focus on the general, you know, pseudo random or generate pseudo random input. That first step, I think it's pretty much crucial for any uh, fuzzers out there. 
but before we get into input and what kind of input, we need to first figure out and go deeper. Now, I said this is going to be about browser fuzzing, but the browser itself is already a really complex program. It's 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 made of uh, a, a lot of you know components and and things. So we need to specify our target even more and 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 choose let's say a sub target uh, beyond or, or inside the browser itself. So the browser, for example, has um, for Chromium based browser, which Edge is a Chromium based browser and um, Chrome obviously is a Chromium Edge browser. And there's all sorts of like embedded browsers that use Chromium as their, as their main uh, browse, browsing en engine. And V8 is the JavaScript um, engine within Chromium. And so that is a very popular target for fuzzing because you know JavaScript it's 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 essentially run client side so you know for the most part when it comes to browsers so it's it's a pretty interesting target you can get pretty interesting bugs when you find something good in it another component is the blink component which handles the html part um, all the APIs that uh, deal with inter-process communication and all that good stuff. Uh, technically, V8 is within Blink, but for the purposes of choosing a fuzzing target, it's better to separate them just to kind of simplify things and think about them in a, in a better way. Another um, semi less popular, in my opinion, target would be uh, third-party libraries that Chromium uses. Or, or the browser uses, whether it's open source or uh, proprietary, uh, GPU process, network process, all of these can also be viable targets. But for me, I'm gonna focus on HTML. I think it's a very good starting point. Um, I feel like more people know what HTML is than anything, any of those other stuff. So um, for the purposes of an intro introductory sort of um, thing, uh, HTML, I think, is uh, is an appropriate target. So now we uh, have our input and our you know main thing that we want to do, which is HTML input. Uh, we want to generate now pseudo random HTML input instead of just a general input. One of these tools that uh, I've used when I first started learning about uh, fuzzing a little bit deeper is called Dharma which is uh, an open source project uh, made by Mozilla Security. Uh, you can find it there. And I, I definitely suggest you go and read it uh, as much as you can. What this does is it's called a grammar-based fuzzer. So it generates input, but it requires you to write grammar first. So to sort of tell it what kind of input to create. Um, it has uh, a bunch of examples in the repo. You can go and check it out, but that's basically what it does. So this is what a grammar file would look like uh, without anything, just the, the bare bones of it. Uh, you'll see there's like in line one, there's like a comment, and then you have uh, three main sections, uh, value, variable, and variance. The value, you just set a bunch of uh, values, uh, uh, and then variable is just yeah, like, like the name says, you track variables. And then variance, you don't really do much, but it pretty much starts from variance. And I'll show you in a bit here. So take this very simple example where I have um, a value called example with a bunch of values. And then in line 19, you can see I have uh, reference to that uh, value um, set. And once I run it, it'll give me a bunch of different inputs every time I run it. As you can see, it's just random stuff. Uh, once I complicate it a little bit more, you can see that uh, the input or the output rather gets a little bit more interesting. So uh, not, not, re not really a lot of time to go through every what's going on here, but I, I hope you get the idea. This is the JavaScript right now that's creating HTML and uh, it's the output once rendered will look something like this. And another great uh, uh, resource, I guess, would be the MDN docs. Um, just look up whatever you need. In this instance, I'm looking up the marquee 
uh, HTML tag. And um, yeah, you can just look up all the specifications and compatibility table and all of that good stuff. Uh, yeah, so let's let's see if we can generate a uh, marquee uh, sort of mini fuzzer just for example sake. So as you can see here, get you some time to sort of look at what's going on. If you see under bar, I am uh, mainly calling bar and adding a marquee key and then referencing attributes value set. And the attributes value set is giving me a single value, which is direction, and then referencing a direction set, which gives me either left, right, up, and down. Once I, ru I run this for a single time, you can see the output is, you know, randomly generated kind of with, with a little bit of direction for me. Uh, adding a little bit more complexity, including nesting, you'll see that uh, at line 24, I'm actually doing a nest call. So I'm like, calling myself. So I'm referencing bar at the same time. And so that will result in even more complex uh, output. As you can see, there's like nested marquees now. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much fuzzy. Uh, you can of course go to MDN, describe more like some of the Dharma grammar files that you'll find in the repo that I posted for GitHub and Mozilla security. You'll see they're pretty big. So uh, as, as you can imagine, you can build upon this more and more and more, and you've got more and more complex output. And then all you do after you add, you can have Dharma output like a thousand files, for example, in some folder. Then you create a program, like we call it a harness, to open these files one by one in the browser. And of, of course, detect if there's a crash occurring. If the crash and you get lucky if the crash is a security concern, you might be able to get profit. And one recent example of this, like uh, this was a publicly disclosed bug that was fixed recently. Um, well, it was fixed probably like more like four months ago, but it was publicly disclosed recently. And this is the only thing that needed to be generated. I didn't find this, this was reported by uh, uh, a person called Renata using a grammar, grammar renator fuzzer. That's a mouthful. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically using a grammar based fuzzer and it generated this code and it crashed Chrome in such a way that it was a security concern. And as you can see, the severity is high here, uh, netting about $5,000. Uh, and, and I'm not saying you know, $5,000 is, is you know, the only reason why you should fuzz, but it kind of just shows you that sometimes you can get lucky with this. So it's, uh, you know, it's, worth, uh, it's worth getting into and investing some time. Um, you learn about different things like we learned today about the marquee HTML element, if you didn't know about it. Now you know that there's like an attribute called direction goes up and down, right? So the more you do this, the more you learn. And maybe at the end, if you're you know lucky, you might get even some money out of it. Um, and also, finally, you can also do some art with this. So this is, uh, if you remember in the beginning, I mentioned that I was fuzzing without realizing it. So this is like my earliest attempt. I forgot what like year I did this, but you can, look it up online. I'll post the link after this, um, where I was just using JavaScript to generate nested marquees. And then I, I realized at some point after realizing I'm never gonna get the browser to crash and get nothing out of this, I decided to add some colors, add some borders and voila, you got, you got a piece of uh, techno art uh, in your hand. So that's also another benefit. Um, so yeah, get into fuzzing and uh, if you have any questions later on or now, feel free to uh, yeah, ask now or reach out later in Twitter. My Twitter DMs are always open, always happy to answer any questions. Thank you.